Titan boa was the largest snake to have ever lived. It thrived during the late Paleocene, around 60 million years ago, and lived what is now known as Columbia. Its enormous size has been estimated from large fossilized vertebrae found throughout the northeastern Colombian region of La Guajira. Based on these estimates, the snake would have easily grown to 12 to 14 meters long. That's 42 to 47 feet. It could have been 3 feet wide, struggling to fit through a typical door. They would have regularly weighed more than 700 kilograms or 1,500 pounds and may have even exceeded 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. The first fossils of Titan boa were found in a coal mine in Colombia. Rocks in the mine dated back 60 million years, and preserved in those rocks was a fossilized tropical rainforest. It was as though the scientists were opening a window and looking back at Colombia a few million years after the dinosaurs lived there. Also preserved amongst the fossilized rainforest were the bones of different animals, and that's when they discovered it, the most gigantic snake to have ever lived. Interestingly, Paleontologists also found the remains of a one-ton snapping turtle called Carbonimes in the vicinity of the Titan boa fossils. These giant reptiles would have lived alongside each other with crocodilians. Some have suggested that these may have been considered prey for the giant snakes. But despite their enormous size and predatory appearance, it is thought that Titan boas most often preyed upon fish rather than larger, land-based prey. The climate and habitat in which Titan boa lived allowed for them to reach such large sizes, but could they survive today? Let's first look at the snake's diet. Could South America provide the right sort of prey for this prehistoric snake? Unlike many of today's boas, Titan boa was a specialized feeder. Boids, or boas, the family of snakes to which Titan boa belongs, kill their prey through asphyxiation. They grasp their prey and quickly wrap their bodies around it, squeezing tighter and tighter until the animal can no longer inhale. Within this family of snakes are the green anacondas, the heaviest and second largest snakes in the world. Although most of their prey are the size of a domestic cat, these snakes are also capable of killing and consuming larger animals like tapirs. From studying the skull structure and dentition of fossilized titan boas, scientists have concluded that they were adapted to feed on a diet of fish. This would be well suited to them given the habitat they lived in. Although Titan boa is related to modern-day constrictors like boas and pythons, it is thought that these snakes may have hunted more like a crocodile. They likely stalk their prey within striking distance before pouncing on it and seizing it in its jaws. This hunting technique would make more sense than the constriction if the snake's diet was predominantly made up of fish. If they were alive today, there would be the opportunity for Titan boas to feed on fish in Colombia's rivers such as the Magdalena and the Amazon as well as the surrounding waterways and tributaries. In fact, Colombia has the second highest diversity of freshwater fish in the world. Some of the world's largest freshwater fish live in the Amazon River. Due to its large size and extraordinary weight, Titan boa would have been able to move more easily in water. Arapaima, a freshwater fish, can grow up to 3 meters or 10 feet long. Whilst fish like these could provide food for Titan boa, they are facing the threat of extinction from overfishing, habitat destruction, and water pollution. Declining fish populations across the world are proving disastrous for the many different species that rely on them for their food. The same would likely be true for Titan boa if it was to be reincarnated and released back into Colombia's waterways. But many reptiles can go days, weeks, or even months between meals. Their slow metabolisms mean that feeding every day isn't always necessary. If anacondas catch and consume a large animal, then it can take a few days for them to digest it. A single meal can give some snakes enough energy to last them a long time. If the same was true for titan boas, then it may mean that they could survive where species of prey fish were less abundant. It is not that difficult to imagine the enormous snake living in South America's rainforests. Anacondas are already found there, living within the same habitats once frequenced by Titan boa. The climate across Colombia during the Paleocene was similar to today. Some believe that the mean annual temperature was 32 to 33 degrees Celsius, or 89 to 91 degrees Fahrenheit, slightly higher than the average 27 degrees Celsius, or 80 degrees Fahrenheit found there today. For cold-blooded animals like reptiles, having a high, relatively constant temperature year-round enables them to maintain optimal metabolism, 
This allows them to gain more energy from their meals and put more into growing. This is why a lot of people think that temperatures during the Paleocene were significantly warmer than today. Others report there to be little difference between temperatures of the Paleocene and temperatures today in the rainforest regions of South America. Either way, the warmer climate is linked to larger reptiles, as they depend on the external temperature and environment for their metabolism and movement. Larger reptiles are typically found closer to the equator. It's easy to imagine Titan boa could exist in Colombia's rainforest alongside the likes of green anacondas, but if the region is a few degrees cooler today than it was 60 million years ago, this may not bode well for Titan boa. It may not be able to reach the sizes it is famed for, which in turn significantly affect its whole ecology. Presumably, this is why anacondas, although large snakes, don't grow to the sizes that Titan boa did. Others have argued that it wasn't the temperature that allowed Titan boa to grow so enormous, but a lack of mammalian predators. During the Paleocene, South America was home to a growing number of mammals, but most of these were herbivores and non-predatory, at least not for a snake. They consisted of marsupials, ungulates, and xenarthrons, which included sloths, armadillos, and anteater-like mammals. Would there be space for another species of snake in the niche that is currently occupied by anacondas? Maybe being a specialist feeder would give Titan boa an advantage. It wouldn't be directly competing with other large snakes found in South America's jungles, hunting along riverbanks and in waterways, rather than on the rainforest floor or in trees. So, what led to Titan boa's demise? It seems to have gone extinct before the end of the Paleocene. The changing climate and habitat shifts are suspected as being the cause of this species' extinction. The global climate was becoming cooler and was therefore favoring smaller snakes that required less warmth to maintain their metabolism. There were also huge shifts in the snake's habitat. Tropical rainforests across South America gave way to open grasslands. Titan boa, it seems, was unable to adapt to these changes. It is possible that Titan boa could survive today but it probably wouldn't be at the size that it once grew. The climate is cooler than it was during the Paleocene, and snakes measuring over 40 feet long would struggle to maintain their metabolism. Today's global warming is unlikely to be able to provide an answer. The warming that is gripping our planet today is too rapid for species like Titan boa to adapt to. Changes in global temperatures over the millennia have mostly been slow and gradual, allowing those who can adapt to do so. Titan boa would still be able to hunt in Colombia's waterways, but these are under threat from a range of different sources. Water pollution and overfishing could mean limited food sources for Titan boa. Being immersed in the water, modern-day chemicals from diesel engines, agricultural runoff, and sewerage could prove harmful to these semi-aquatic snakes. Furthermore, there is relatively little habitat left that is untouched by man. A few small pockets of rainforest could provide refuge for these giant snakes. But as we continue to deplete the world's natural resources, habitats like those once inhabited by these prehistoric snakes are lost. In conclusion, we believe that if Titan boa was given a chance to become re-established on this earth, then it would struggle to survive. There are resources out there, there is still habitat available and prey to feed upon. But with such damage and destruction caused by humans, how long would it be before they reach their demise once more? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.